Hi everyone! Playing virtual instruments live with DVZMate can be very fun and speed up your composing process a lot if you usually perform parts one at a time. But we have been asked now multiple times if DVZMate can also be useful for composers and producers who aren't very good keyboard players or who prefer to have more control about every note in advance. The answer of course is yes. So I wanted to make a quick video focused on a different kind of workflow, working with the loopback port. The loopback port is a virtual MIDI device that allows you to send MIDI from a track in your DRW to DVZMate. This way you can have one or even multiple control tracks in your project where you can prepare and edit MIDI data before you send it to DVZMate. Let me show you how this works, how to set it up and how it can be used. For the purpose of this tutorial I'll use Cubase, but the core principle can be used in other software as well. There will be another video soon showing how to do this in other DRWs. So here I have a slightly customized version of the Swarm Orchestral template loaded and now I want to introduce the loopback port to this template instead of always just recording my live performance. My goal is to record something onto a MIDI track with my breath controller and keyboard, send it out to DVZMate and record the resulting orchestration on my instrument tracks above within the same project. To do this, the first thing I do is create a MIDI track and name it loopback. In the inspector, I will set the output destination of this track to DVZMate loopback. Heading over to DVZMate, I now need to go to the settings page and deactivate my keyboard and breath controller so I don't get duplicates. And next I will activate the loopback input. And as you can see, it will warn me to be careful while using this part. Essentially, when the loopback is activated, you could build an endless feedback loop, sending MIDI from DVZMate ports directly back into DVZMate, and that's never a good thing. So we need to be mindful of our routing when we use the loopback port to avoid that. The main important thing when I do this is to always make sure that the track that is sending to the loopback port is never also receiving anything from DVZMate, but only from my actual MIDI controllers. So I could just select my keyboard MIDI input or the breath controller here directly, but I want to use them both together, so I select all MIDI inputs. This option does actually not mean that it will record every MIDI device together. That would be a problem, of course. When you go to Studio Setup MIDI Port Setup, you can actually specify which input devices should be included when you select all MIDI inputs on a track. So this is a nice trick to avoid feedback loops and record only the inputs that you want together on the track. So over here I'm going to activate my keyboard and my breath controller and make sure that all the other devices, especially the DVZMate ports, are not included. Alright, now that everything is set up, I should be able to record enable my loopback track, press some notes on the keyboard and see them show up on the keyboard display in DVZMate. So anything happening on this loopback track will now serve as the only input for DVZMate. This also means that I can use MIDI insert plugins, pattern generators or simply drop pre-recorded MIDI files on here to send them to DVZMate. For now I'll just record something live and to hear the result at the same time I'll quickly activate the monitoring on my orchestral tracks and play a 5 part string section. So essentially what's happening now is that the MIDI from this track is sent to DVZMate and DVZMate is sending the resulting orchestration to my instrument tracks up here. Now that I have the raw data recorded, I can make little changes and corrections to what I just played. I can go in there to fix some note lengths, gaps and overlaps and also quickly smooth out some jumps and irregularities from my performance in the controller data for expression and vibrato. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Good. Now I can go and experiment with the orchestration in DVZMate. How about adding flutes and an oboe to the top line? Maybe 
maybe move the flute up an octave. Okay, and let me just add the clarinets and bassoons to fill out the lower four voices. Now to really support the cello line in the second half, let's double voice 4 with horns and the lowest voice with a tuba to give some extra warmth to the bass. I mean, you get the idea. You can spend time and try out different orchestrations on the music you have written and find the orchestration that sounds best to you. This is not a masterpiece right now, but I'm gonna go with it. Once I settle for an orchestration, I can just record enable my orchestra and record it onto the different tracks. So this is the basic way to set up and use a loopback track in Cubase. But of course this is not how you have to use it. There are countless different ways you can work with a loopback part. You could have different control tracks for different sections and prepare preset changes by sending CC31 or program changes. You could do some sketching on a different track with an ensemble patch and then move the recorded notes to a loopback track to split them up. Or you can, of course, write note by note in the piano roll and orchestrate them with DVs made afterwards. All of this is up to you. I hope this video has been helpful to give you a solid starting point to build your personal workflow with this. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions. We'll make another video soon to show how to set up and work with a loopback part in other DAWs, including Logic Pro, Reaper and Ableton Live. Subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to get notified as soon as that video is out. Until then, thank you for watching and see you on the next video.